Special delivery. Come in to El Pano. Two more boxes from Asheville. Got to be books, I reckon. Uh oh. Too heavy to be much else. Thank you, Mr. Pentland. Now, if we could just find a crowbar. Teacher. Isaac, you weren't in school today. Mama. Mama's carrying on right bad. Our little baby quit breathing last night. We not even time to go for the doctor. Isaac, I'm sorry. She was the only girl baby after us three boys. Would you come, Miss Christie? Mom says if she's got to give up this lease, then she'd like her laid out real pretty. The baby had died needlessly. Opal thought she was liver groat, a mountain superstition. The cure was to force the baby's hand and heel to touch. Opal tried and accidentally broke her baby's back. It even has ribbons. No baby in the cove ever had ribbons before. It's Plum Purdy. Oh, Miss Christie. I'm obliged to you. You seem troubled, Miss Huddleston. I'm confused, Dr. McNeil. About what? About babies dying because of ignorance and superstition. Are you referring to the McCone infant? I helped lay her out. And you think I was remiss in my duty, not a real doctor to my people, is that it? I have to admit, I did have that thought. You don't know the facts. That's just an excuse, doctor. I've known Opal McCone all my life. Don't you think I mourn her, child? Her granny was true Scotch-Irish. An herbalist, revered in the cove. Some of what she said was sound, some of it was nonsense, like the liver growed ailment. But her word was gospel, it still is. So it's Opal's fault she wouldn't listen to you? Not if my word crosses granny's. If I insisted, she'd stop listening to me, and so would everyone else. So if a little girl dies along the way, well, it's just too bad, isn't it? Let me tell you what it's like to practice here. Last year, I made 174 night calls. I probed for bullets in lungs. I sutured cut bellies. I tried to put back gouged out eyes. I'd love to have the time to teach the mothers to take care of their babies. But there's a world full of hate out there, and there's only one me. If you see the world that way, it makes me wonder how you can believe in God. I don't. I believe in science and in myself, and I'm sorry if that's not good enough for you. I'd never seen a place as beautiful as Cutter Gap, or as unforgiving. Opal McCone's husband, Tom, wasn't there when the baby died. He was a good man who'd been caught in the Taylor Allen feud and shot. To protect his family, he was hiding out in the woods. Dr. McNeil was right about one thing. Feuding was a curse on these mountains. And I knew the children were the only hope of stopping it. More tests? You're a taskmaster, Christy. Or is it task mistress? Neither. I finally finished copying all the parts from Romeo and Juliet. Are you sure this is a good idea? A month ago, most of them didn't know what a play was, much less Shakespeare. Now you want them to act one. What better way for them to learn that beauty is wrong? David, you can hear Shakespeare's time in the way they speak. And besides, it's the best play he ever wrote. The writing, the poetry. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. We preachers don't just read the Bible, you know. Will you be in Knoxville long? Until I find the lowest prices on supplies and copybooks. No later than Friday. Ben Pentland has arranged a wagon for me. It has to be back by sundown. You'll be on the road all alone. Bird's Eye hasn't forgotten that you preached against him. He's kept Lundy out of school. He'll keep on feuding with the Allens and making moonshine, but he's not going to bother us. He's got too much to lose. Will you be careful anyway? You too. You keep the doors locked and keep my old shotgun handy just in case.
Ruby May, I'd like you to play Juliet. She's the heroine who dies for love. Oh, Miss Christie, this is a heap of words. I don't know if I can say them all. Shoot, Ruby May, you can talk water uphill. It run uphill as soon as it smells. That's enough for us. <laughs> you would be just fine, Ruby May. Zach, you're Tybalt, Juliet's cousin, and Creed, you're Mercutio, Romeo's best friend. Did he sword fight, ma'am? Yes. He's killed by Tybalt, who's killed by Romeo, and then Romeo is banished. Tybalt, you rat catcher! <gasps> All right, boys. Boys, sword fighting is not the point. Rob, you'll be Romeo. I reckon I can try, ma'am. And I reckon I understand what Juliet means about names and how they don't signify. That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. See, she's saying that if you called me like a Zadie Spencer, I'd still smell the very same. Ain't that right, Miss Christie? I hoped not. Ruby May's personal hygiene left a lot to be desired. Does that still smell the same? Uh, sort of. I think it means that no matter what you're called, you're still the same inside. Oh, Lordy. Heaven can't be much sweeter. What's this? Oh, that's perfume. You see, sachets make your clothes smell nice, and perfume makes you smell nice. Truly? This little bitty bottle could make me smell like you? Well, it, it could if you took a bath first. Oh, no, ma'am. Baths is a sin and dangerous. Too many, and you catch your death of cold. New Year's Day and Easter Sunday. Them's the only safe times to bath. Well, it's getting late. Won't your folks be wondering where you are? There ain't nobody to wonder. My granny over in Raymond Gap took sick, so Ma went to nurse her. My pa's off hunting. Might be gone months. They reckon I'm big enough to take care of myself. Would you like to stay here? For supper? That's right, nice. No, you... no. I mean, until your parents get back. You could be an experiment, our first boarding student. Oh, yes, ma'am. I surely yes. would like that. I'll be as quiet as a baby mouse. You will never know I'm here. Oh, I can learn my play acting real well, because you can teach me just right. Oh, and we can whisper secrets each night before we go to bed. And I'll work twice as hard to earn my keep. You just see if I don't. And I can wash more dishes than you can shake a stick at. Oh, Miss Christie, <laughs> thank you. Your heart went out to her, that's commendable. But you never considered the other people who live here or the mission. Only what you wanted. I'm sorry, I was thoughtless. It's extra work for Miss Ida and David's always worried about money. I should have asked all of you. Now, it trying to run before they can walk. I spoke to you about that before. What was that? We have heard you, now show yourself. Hush. Tom? Tom McCall? Oh, ma'am. Please, be quiet. And it's after me, my take notice. We must get you inside. Oh, no. This will be just fine, but I can just sleep here tonight. You will sleep in the mission tonight. Your wound may need attention. At the very least, you must have a hot meal. Please, ma'am, don't make a fuss. We'll turn the lanterns down, as if we're going to bed. And then we can sneak you into the back door. Trouble. Don't you trouble, Tom. Save your strength. Open up! 